beautiful little star. How I wonder where you are, up above the clouds so high. Hmm. Bored, bored, bored. What can I do? How about start a YouTube channel? Welcome to Budget Studio One at Space Central for Give Me Space Episode One. My name is Daryl and I've been interested in backyard astronomy and astrophotography for years. Now I'm retired, I've decided to give astrophotography a try, but with no regular income I need to keep a rein on the budget, so I'll be trying to get the best bang for my buck. I've been doing a lot of research on the internet and YouTube and found a lot of good information at what I would consider the intermediate and advanced level. The sort of thing that tells you how to set things up, but maybe not why you would want to buy it in the first place. So the thrust of these initial videos will be an introduction for the rank beginner to equipment and some basic techniques. Given that I've only been doing this for six months, uh, I remember the misconceptions I had when I started, so I think I'm qualified to try to help other newbies. I mean, I've already sold on my first telescope, as it turned out to be too advanced for what I want to do now, and I don't have room to store much gear. A bit of a warning though, I'm based in Australia, so there'll be a Southern Hemisphere bias to my videos. Any prices mentioned will be Australian dollars unless otherwise stated, and references to where I bought things will be Australian source, some of which may uh, also exist across the Tasman in New Zealand. Okay, some terms and definitions. First up, what do I mean by astrophotography? To me it's the creation of images of objects outside the Earth's atmosphere using digital photographic techniques. I'll allow meteors, satellites and auroras as well. And for the pedants, you could use a film camera, but uh, that's starting to make life difficult. A couple of technical terms here. Experienced astrophotography people, block your ears now. This is going to be simple and imprecise. I'm just looking to point uh, people in the right direction with what these terms uh, mean. Okay, photograph versus image. The word photograph tends not to be used uh, as it implies a single image created with a single press of the shutter button. Astro images are normally created from a set of single images merged together to get a final result. I'll talk about this process in more detail in another video. Astrophotographers generally refer to the process of taking individual photographs uh, or videos, yes you can use videos too, as gathering data because this is what you're doing. Um, Gathering data, to, you're gathering data be processed into a final single image. Magnification. Now magnification is something that uh, beginners get really um, tied up with uh, and uh, it's a term that's not often used. It's not as relevant as you think. Um, astrophotographers work more in terms of field of view, which is how big or small the area is that you can see through the camera and lens combination that you're currently using. Um, the camera sensor size can influence the field of view, uh, but again, we'll talk about this in more detail in another video. Field of view roughly corresponds to magnification. The smaller the field of view of uh, a, given, a given camera lens combination, the greater the magnification. By the way, just think of a telescope as a type of camera lens. Given that you're taking photographs, what is important is how you can best compose the shot uh, of the target object with, with the field of view that you have to get, the, um, to get the image that you want, to get the composition that you want. Unless you're looking at small targets like the planets and some of the smaller galaxies and nebulas, you don't need a lot of magnification. Luckily, a lot of the best objects to image are larger than you think, but too faint for the human eye to pick up uh, in any detail. How big? Often bigger than the full moon. In the south, think of the uh, Eta Carina Nebula or the Clouds of Magellan. In the north, think of the Andromeda Galaxy. The problem is not so much magnifying tiny objects, but gathering enough light to enable the objects to be seen or to bring out the detail that your eyes can't see even through a telescope. I'll be going into more detail about this in other videos. 
the process. Okay, the first thing you need to do is plan the shot. Can you image the object with the gear you have? Is it too small or too dim, or maybe too big or too bright? In general, big bright objects like the moon are easy targets uh, with basic equipment. They're easy to find and um, don't need uh, long exposures. Small dim objects are the most difficult. Most new astrophotographers think of the planets as a good initial subjects, but their small size makes them more difficult than you would think. There are some apps uh, and online tools that are designed to allow you to plan an imaging session. First, you have to consider, can you see the object at the time of year you want to image it? What time of the night is it visible and where in the sky will it be? How do you need to point your gear to get uh, the composition you want? There are also software tools that allow you to work out what uh, camera sensitivity I slash ISO and shutter speed you need to use. But initially it's worth just experimenting yourself so you can see what results you get. To set your equipment up and take the photos, I gather the data. Three, process the individual images to generate the final result. Like anything, the whole process requires skill and experience. You can throw money at and equipment at it, but you'll never get a good result without the basic skills, which you just have to learn. The internet is full of videos of people using basic and cheap equipment uh, to get really good results. Okay, what do you need? Um, for that, I think we'll proceed uh, over to the show and tell table and we'll have a look at what basic equipment you actually need to get started with astrophotography. Okay, here we are at the show and tell table um, to have a look at what is the very basic equipment that I think you need to take up astrophotography. So astro, the term astrophotography um, in strongly implies photography, so the very first thing you're going to need is a camera. Now, you do not need a, any kind of specialised uh, camera, just a run-of-the-mill um, DSLR slash mirrorless camera slash bridge camera, um, relatively ordinary thing uh, will do. Um, lots available on the market. Uh, you can, if you have a camera, then uh, you can very probably use the camera you've got. And these are the two uh, cameras uh, I currently have. Um, this is a Sony RX10 Mark IV, which is a bridge camera, which uh, means that the lens is not um, removable. Um, uh, the, buying that was a deliberate choice because this is my all-round uh, Camera goes, travels a lot, goes outdoors a lot. Um, and for me, the simplicity of just uh, not having to worry about different lenses uh, is uh, a big plus. Um, for the price, it has a very good lens. I paid uh, 1,700 Australian dollars for this. And it has a uh, Carl Zeiss Vario Sona lens. Um, uh, 8.8 feel the the focal length is uh, 8.8 to 220 digital which is um, basically near I don't know what to uh, about 600 millimeters uh, 35 millimeter equivalent so um, at full telephoto you can see that it's actually quite compact but that has a that's a 600 millimeter focal length um, normally at f2.4 so it's fast um, the focal length makes it the equivalent of a uh, small telescope uh, and um, even though beginners um, and including me get carried away with the whole concept of um, magnification 600 millimeters for a lot of uh, astrophotography of deep sky objects is more than enough more than enough at 600 millimeters many objects will not fit into the available field of view 
for planetary imaging, 600 millimetres is in fact, I don't think that it's uh, enough. Um, but yeah, the, the noise is fairly low, easily available. It's the camera uh, I have, and I've had some uh, fairly good results with it. Okay, the other camera um, I have is a um, Sony uh, A55. Uh, oh, that has a, by the way, has a one inch sensor. This is an APS-C camera. This is a lot older um, camera and is, uh, has a removable uh, lens. This camera I bought uh, specifically uh, to uh, attach to a telescope, uh, which I had at the time, but I no longer have. So um, this doesn't get used very uh, often at the moment, but it will um, soon get a new life because I've got a, um, a new telescope on order. Um, so uh, yeah, it's rel you know, relatively basic camera. The big attraction for me was the fact that the camera and the um, 18 to 70 mil zoom lens was 120 Australian dollars. Um, so if you were looking at uh, picking a camera up on, on the second hand market, uh, you don't have to pay an awful lot. Um, you do not need um, a top hole camera with all the bells and whistles to get started in uh, astrophotography because one of the first things that you um, do is in fact turn everything, turn all the fancy stuff off. Um, you don't need autofocus. Um, astrophotography is done with manual focus. You um, set the exposure, you know, you set the shutter speed and the ISO manually. So um, you uh, essentially just need sort of a basic camera with a good sensor, um, relatively low noise at, um, high uh, ISO settings, about you know, 800 to 3200. Um, knowing what I know now, um, if I was looking for a, a camera to use specifically for astrophotography, I would look at Nikon or Canon um, because they're both good brands, uh, you know, with quality um, sensors and electronics, but um, because they're very popular in the astrophotography field, there is a lot of aftermarket accessories available for them. Now there is also um, dedicated astronomy cameras, uh, which uh, are designed to bolt, um, you know, to attach directly to a telescope. And I don't have one of those. This is just a prop I made for another video. But like, rather than talk to the air, I thought I'd um, get that out. Um, so they are there. Um, I will talk about them in another video uh, because I'm planning on doing uh, the next episode uh, will be just a, a summary about cameras and go into more detail. Okay, what else do you need? Uh, the, you will need something to um, stand all this on because you cannot shoot astrophotography handheld. The um, exposure lengths that you need are just uh, too long to successfully do that. So you will need a tripod of some form. This actually to go on my coffee table here. Yes, sort of. Okay, I don't know how well that fits into the frame. Um, a sturdy uh, photographic tripod will do, but uh, this is a telescope tripod. Uh, I got with a, um, a basic telescope that somebody bought me to get me started into uh, astronomy because, uh, again, because I've been interested in it for years. But this is far more sturdy than uh, a camera tripod. Um, has you know, the usual extendable legs. Um, uh, the head is uh, a lot more sturdy, has slow motion controls on it, which are helpful. Um, but the biggest thing you need to look for if you're going to um, get a telescope tripod or use a telescope tripod uh, is to make sure that it has a relatively easy way to mount a camera on it because a lot of um, telescope tripods have more specialised um, mountings 
for um, telescope uh, tube assemblies rather than a camera. This particular tripod, um, if you're interested, it's uh, from a Saxon, a relatively basic Saxon telescope. Um, this has uh, the quarter inch 20 um, thread that is the standard um, tripod mount uh, on a camera. Um, uh, if you uh, have a camera with a 3 8 the bigger 3 8 inch thread, then um, you can get adapters, you, you would know that you can get adapters to go on the um, smaller um, quarter inch threads. Um, and this particular uh, tripod is actually very good, but um, with this relatively narrow um, bit, it's very stable fore and aft, but it's a bit wobbly um, left and right. Okay, what else do we need? Um, well, in my opinion, because of the long focal lengths that you need for astrophotography, um, you can try starting off and see how you go without a star tracker. But I found very quickly that you um, need a star tracker to counteract the apparent motion of the stars caused by the rotation of the Earth. Now, that rotation is about 15 degrees per hour. So um, if you're shooting very wide angle shots of the Milky Way, you can probably get quite long exposures, you know, 10, 20, maybe 30 seconds without noticing any trails uh, on the stars. But if you're using a field of view um, small enough uh, to take in, uh, to frame just uh, a single object like the Orion Nebula, so if you're using about um, a focal length of about 100 millimetres or, or 200 millimetres, the exposure lengths you can take before you get star trials are very short. So you will need a star tracker to counteract that. And this is the one I bought. <clears throat> There's several different uh, types available on the market and hopefully in video three, I will um, do a video on um, tripods and mounts and uh, star trackers. Um, this is a Skywatch uh, Star Adventurer 2i, um, and it cost me about 700 Australian dollars. And just my luck, the um, the new Star Adventurer um, GTI came out about the day after I uh, ordered this, and this was uh, on its way. So uh, I really couldn't cancel and get the um, GTI. Um, and when I do the video about um, mounts and star trackers, I will explain to you the um, advantages of the GTI over this basic star tracker. Um, if you're into general photography, this does some quite cool things. Uh, it's not just a star tracker. If you ever like the idea of doing um, time-lapse uh, photography, a bit like um, David Attenborough documentaries where you get a time-lapse where the camera is panning while it's doing the time lapse. Um, this can do um, that kind of thing. It's quite, um, quite versatile. Um, as I said, you don't strictly need one, but if you're gonna take uh, photographs of um, particular objects like the Orion Nebula or the Andromeda Galaxy, <clears throat> you will find pretty fast that it makes your life much, much easier because without it, you have to do a lot of post-processing. You have to take a lot of images and you have to uh, post-process the images um, um, to uh, get a result and it um, affects your uh, composition. Yeah, just budget to get one. Okay, and what else do we need? Well, because you are going to have to um, process your collection of images. You will need, uh, that's heavier than it looks, a computer. Uh, sorry, there's no escaping it. Uh, you're not just going to be able to take single um, images and have them come out all wonderful. Uh, if you want uh, your sort of like semi-Hubble space telescope quality images, 
you're going to have to process them. Um, so the normal process is, as I mentioned before, is to take multiple individual photos and then use computer software to um, sum them, which uh, effectively gives you um, sort of a pseudo super long exposure of like one hour, two hours, because you cannot do that. Essentially with a basic star tracker, uh, you can't uh, do exposures um, super long, maybe two minutes, three minutes, if you um, set it up very well. Um, and also on top of the stacking, it's um, generally accepted that you're going to have to do some post-processing of the images to um, adjust the contrast to bring out the details. As far as software goes, you can get away with um, free software, but well, it's not really fair to say get away with. Uh, the free software for astrophotography in sp particular is very, very good. Um, uh, and it's available for Windows, uh, Mac and Linux. Um, I tend to use uh, Linux and uh, Windows uh, primarily because I've used Linux for years and um, the main computer I use for processing, which is not this one, um, is has an 8-core CPU and runs Linux very rapidly. As far as um, computing power goes, uh, you're going to need something respectable, but probably, you know, like a very cheap basic laptop will not, will struggle, I think. You need something half reasonable, and then, um, but the computer, secondhand computer market is very, um, uh, very big worldwide. Um, so you should be able to pick up something relatively cheap. Um, I actually, I've got more computers that I know what to do with and none of them uh, are new, um, including this one, which is like a bit of an antique. Um, this would do fine, even though I don't use it for um, processing uh, images at the moment, uh, but may fall back to it. Okay, here we are back in Studio One. So this is my uh, current imaging setup uh, that I'm working with and will no doubt be tweaking and refining over the coming months. Um, I'll go into more detail about um, this particular setup and setup in general and um, how I use it in future videos. In the next video, I'll um, discuss cameras in more detail. Um, just, a, just some information to clarify uh, what to look for so you can spend your money wisely and uh, preserve that valuable budget. Okay, that's it for episode one. If this video was uh, helpful, please uh, give me a like down below. I forget which side it is. Um, and uh, maybe subscribe if you want to get notified when I release more scintillating content. If you didn't like the video, then um, sorry about that. Uh, I'll try harder next time. But um, until then, keep safe uh, and may the weather gods smile upon you. Thank you very much for watching.